small group of us, but it only takes a small group of people to make change happen, right? So I think that that is a, a good way for us to um, set our frame of mind with regards to what the next year will look like for Ache. And Mary, thank you for joining us. I, I know most of you met our campus president, Mary Ritter. I got a ton of compliments Hi, about you, actually, um, before you stepped in here. She is as amazing as you see. This is, this is who she is all the time. And so um, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. This you're is welcome. just a small group of us right now. We'll have more trickle in. But we will be here all day, so you're welcome to perform. But please, have a minute. Say hello to everybody. Thank you so much for being with us. One of the, one of the greatest things about relationship is that it's networking. We, we understand that we don't do life alone. And I am so thrilled to see just the kaleidoscope and the different generations that make up who we are as an institution. And you are a part of that. And uh, I just would like to formally recognize Patricia for the fantastic work that she's done in just creating today's event and partnering with each of you. And we just look forward to uh, a very strong and strengthened relationship as we're moving forward. Um, again, we understand that we don't do life alone and that we need each other and that together we're strong. And so um, welcome today. Make yourself at home. Our house is your house. If you get lost, ask anyone who has a badge and we'll make sure that you find your way. Um, but if there's anything that we can do to help make your time here more enjoyable, my office is completely open. My passion is your success. And it's just that simple. And so um, our, our focus here is every student, every day, every time, without compromise. And that includes our partners. So thank you for being here. And thank you to Ms. Patricia. I did not do this alone, but, but thank you, and thank all of you. Um, and I, my big push is unity. We need to be un united as a, as a community, as an industry. You know, we, we all do and work with the same goal in mind, and that's educate, educate our communities, educate our students, educate one another. And so that's going to be the focus for today, unity. Thank you for being here. Um, it has, uh, so I've been in this role now for um, two years, and we've sort of been a sleeping giant for the last year, but the key word is giant, I think. You know, we, Cleopatria and I were just talking a little bit earlier about, and some of you were also talking about the, um, the importance of the Hispanic vote, and we all, we all know that we don't get out and vote enough. You know, we, our, our community does not get out and vote enough, and so we have ourselves to blame for the, um, inequality that we might be frustrated with for the the lack of action, we have ourselves to blame. So we have to put it on ourselves to, to do things, right? To to make change and to unite the community. And I try to do it, and maybe, maybe this is just my own way of doing things, but I try to view it as um, there's no skin color. You know, I, I don't look at people for who they are, uh, ethnicity and, and culturally, where they come from, religion, I don't look at any of that. I look at us as the same, we are human beings, the same individuals. And so I think if we, and this is maybe, I'm naive in this way, yes, but I, I believe Hispanic, I know that we have struggles a little differently than others do, but I just know that me. matters. We're all here for the same reason. So um, say that, but we have an opportunity to really come to everybody. So. And uh, nominations are open from the floor throughout the day, so you can give the nomination to either Patricia or myself. But right now, I'd like for you to write in, and the secretary, the name Esther Anaya, is it Garcia Anaya? Anaya Garcia. Anaya Garcia. Esther Anaya Garcia, that's a writing for secretary. Do we need some pens? I've got, no, I've got a ton of them. Let me oh, grab them really quick. Thank you, thank you. Who no and as the day goes on, like I said, if Thank you, you if you would like to nominate yourself, yourself or someone else uh, that has already accepted it, please feel free to give me that name, and we will write him in. But for right now, that's the only write-in we have at this time. Esther, does anybody know? Introduce ourselves individually, but. 
your name, what you, where you come from, what college you come from, if you're a student or an administrator or a faculty, you can share those. And anything else you'd like to share that might um, that you might feel comfortable with. Like for me, I have a toddler, three and a half. He's just in his terrible threes. I don't know what twos are. <laughs> the twos were wonderful. The threes, oh my god. So there, there's a tidbit about me. So please introduce yourselves. Well, since I'm standing up. Yes. Thank you, Judge. <laughs> ah, okay. Do me, do me, do me the honors. Just is running. So. My name is Tony Arroyo. I am the live there intern. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Just, um, as I was saying, <laughs> my name is Tony Arroyo. I am the library director of Pima Community College Desert Vista campus in Tucson, Arizona. Um, Desert Vista is the only campus that has a name. You know, Pima Community College has five campuses. The largest is the West Campus. The second largest is the downtown campus. The third largest is the East Campus. The fourth largest is the Northwest Campus. And the smallest is the Desert Vista Campus. The only one that has a name. We're located in the southwest part of town of Tucson. And our um, student population is approximately, let's, let's uh, talk in round numbers, about 4,000 students. About 75 to 85 percent are Mexican Americans, Native Americans, and the other 15, 10, you know, 15, 20, you know. Anyway, um, I have been a member of uh, Reform. Uh, I'm sorry, this is the other organization, H. Reforma. I just came from uh, the uh, annual conference. Um, I'm not Reforma, but ASLA, Arizona Library Association, yesterday. Um, anyway, I have been a member of H since 1998. And I have been past president, I have been a treasurer, uh, and I am pres presently the historian and the web, well, webmaster. I was going to say, give me the, okay. Um, well, there are um, other things that I could say, but I don't want to take time. You know, welcome, and I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Party, but I'm really excited. My name is Annalisa Caravel. I work with Teach for America, so I coach and train um, first and second year teachers that are coming into Arizona teaching in the pre K to 12th grade setting, so all over the place. Um, yeah, and I'm really excited to be here. I saw the, the schedule, everything looks amazing, and I'm excited to bring stuff back to my teachers and then also to my team. Great. Now, who, who's your husband? Jose Flores. He goes to school with Constantino. Okay, great. Well, uh, welcome. Thank you for coming. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, she's, she's probably the better half, you know. We will tell him about that. Jose Flores is uh, right now uh, uh, in probably the latter part of his doctorate, and, and, and he's going through the exams and so on. So, and kind of like myself, so we met at, at ASU, and uh, I think we have the same thinking in regards to you know inclusiveness, you know, especially when it comes to Chicano and Latino education. And because his wife is already doing it right now, uh, I think she's a valuable class in tomorrow. So yes, thank you for me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Cleopatria Martinez. I'm a mathematician from Phoenix College, the Maricopa system, and I've been with Ache uh, since it started. In the early 80s. So, and 1983. Don't, don't be afraid to say it. <laughs> and, uh, the membership application forms are up here, and I have blanks for all the officers because you will be voting uh, later on in the day, and then you can write the names of the actual officers here. And I encourage you to please join Hachin. And thank you for coming today. You are very valuable. <laughs> well, uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Manuel Sosa. I currently am a student at Phoenix College. Uh, I'm pursuing my business administration degree and uh, a, minor, a minor in biomedical engineering. I am also a member of uh, the Arizona Hispanic Community Forum and uh, I'm a Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society member, co-founder of Voices United and co-founder of the Sustainability Club and that's 
That's me. I'll be transferring to ISU in May of 2015. Can willing? Yeah. Major, minor. Well, I want to have my own business in biomedical engineering, so I just want to know how business. Yeah. Hello, my name is Rosa, and I'm a student, full-time student at PC and a part-time student at ASU. My major is forensics and psychology. My minors are uh, business and family and child studies, and I'm actually like aiming right now for an internship for the summer and I'm pretty excited about that. Nice. And that I've actually used to work with Promise Arizona for a while. I don't know if you guys know Raquel. Yeah, Raquel. Yeah, she's yeah. awesome. Yeah, she's a really great person, and yeah, that's me. <laughs> well, hello, good morning. Uh, my name is Gilberto Sosa. He is my point of view, in case if you're wondering. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I jumped in, I thought I was seeing double. <laughs> <laughs> Currently, I'm a student. I'm a full-time student at Venice College, where I'm majoring in uh, business administration, min minoring, min sorry, minoring in political sciences with an emphasis in law. Uh, I'm the current president of the Honor Society at Phoenix College, co-founder of Voices United, co-founder of the Environmental Club as well. I'm a member of the Maricopa Community College's Student Public Policy Forum, and I will be. I'm on my way to transfer to Harvard University. Whoa! Bravo! Bravo! I transferred uh, the past, this past uh, fall, 20, 2013, to ASU. I graduated in May of 2013 from Martinez College with an AA degree, and I'm majoring in urban planning, and uh, I hope to continue my studies at ASU, and also go, go forward for a master's, and hopefully a doctorate as well. And I'm also a member of Voices United. Okay. Uh, my name is Nicole Bortares. I work for People of Color Network. I am the site mentor there. Um, I also go to school at Gateway. Um, I'm pursuing my bachelor's degree in social work. Um, and I advocate for families on the side. So the mental health system, development of disability system, basically anything. I'll look it up and advocate. So <laughs> that's what I do. That's Love it. Great. Welcome. Thank you. My sticker. Um, my name is Carlos Abuelo. Uh, I'm currently with the People of Color Network, and I represent the gente um, in various uh, ways. Uh, like my partner in crime over here, uh, we uh, on our time off we advocate for families that uh, don't know how to navigate the, the system, whether it be the CPS, mental health system, or anything else that will help them engage in services for any type of kid. Um, an associate's degree from Everest. And I've been a part of Bache for over three, three, four years now. And um, hopefully going back to pursue my, uh, my bachelor's in uh, criminal justice with this uh, association and uh, what, a, what a minor actually in uh, social work. And then hopefully uh, what I really want to do is just uh, bring the knowledge back into the community college. So, that's what I'm doing. Thank you. Yes, and I am Ralph Martinez, uh, and uh, I'm a retired federal employee, also a retired chief warrant officer with the Arizona National Guard. Um, I'm a member of the uh, Arizona Hispanic Community Forum, a current member of ACHE as of this morning. So, uh, <laughs> good, good, welcome. <laughs> looking forward to participate in the various activities. Uh, as, as a retiree, I'm, uh, I was looking for things to do because uh, I was just trying to some young men here. I wake up in the morning and say, what am I going to do today? And I said, nothing. So I decided to get involved, first of all, with, uh, with the Arizona Hispanic Community Forum, of, of which I learned uh, of this organization. And so I'm probably going to stick with these two rather than, you know, uh, spread myself too thin. So I hope to be productive uh, and active in, in both the organizations. So uh, I'm, I'm glad to be a part of you. And uh, thank you for allowing me to be here. Thank you. I work at Glendale Community College. I've been there since kindergarten, I tell people. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be 38 years in January. I am currently the advisor and 
also the coordinator for the non-credit ESL program. So, and it's, our program is actually the only of its kind in the 10 community colleges. I know Rio Salado has some non-credit stuff, but it's very different. So, I'm very proud um, we get students from everywhere. So, I am a very busy person, I love it. Um, I've been in, with Ache for, I can't count the years, but uh, I know I've been a secretary before, but I would definitely love to be a secretary again. So, please vote for me. <laughs> 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 so I, you, I introduced myself already, but again, I'm Patricia Guillen, and um, I have been in education for 25 years. I was 17. I really was 17. I like to tell people I was 12, though, because it makes me seem um, but I work here at Everest College Phoenix. I've been here for almost five years, and I'm uh, currently the program dean over business, accounting, criminal justice, and criminal investigation. That just happened this week, so I'm a little more, my mind's a little more hectic this week than it was last week, but um, aside from that, I have been the president uh, of ACHE for two years now. I was the secretary the year before that, so I've been a member almost five years, almost, this, uh, almost the same amount of time that I've been with this college, actually. And when I did, uh, call, actually, I think I called her email, Cleopatria picked up, a complete stranger, and she asked me if I would come and be the secretary, and I was like, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> so that's how she works. I'm just going <laughs> you guys to <laughs> um, But uh, let's see here. I, um, aside from uh, my work, I have a bachelor's degree in business and management. My master's degree is in organizational management, and I am a dissertation away from a PhD in education. Wow. Uh, dissertation away for a while now, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, welcome, and that's me. And my name is Constantino Lopez. I've been past president of the organization, uh, president of the Arizona Community Forum, and of course some of you, you know, already know uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I'm currently uh, doing, you know, get into the dissertation phase of my, uh, my PhD. As a matter of fact, uh, my professor, the, 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 uh, the chair of my dissertation is here. So, you know, <laughs> you know, my, get some Dr. Uh, este Manuel Hernandez. But um, I'm really glad that, you know, we're going to have this 30th annual. You know, I think this, this is a great organization, and, and, and we just, it's, all of our lives are pretty, you know, busy at times. And it's hard to, to donate the hours because really it's the, the donation of the hours. I think that probably the person that has kept this organization going the most is probably Tony Arroyo. You know? <laughs> he's got all the history. And one of these times he's probably going to show us that, right? I mean, it would have been great if he would have done that in the 30th, right? But, you know, that you can't do all that. Right? So, muchas gracias. And, you know, please to meet you. And Constantino will be a new father in a couple of months, oh. a few months. Oh. Oh. You. Manuel de Jesus Hernandez, a professor of Spanish at uh, ASU. And uh, I've been a Spanish major since the eighth grade and uh, had the privilege to direct thesis and dissertations and prepare people to be teachers of Spanish and defend the language of the culture in the classroom. <laughs> He is being very modest. He has been also past president of ACHE and has been a member of ACHE for many, many years. Good morning, my name is Lucero Bibi Giriche and I am the organizer for the Latino Outreach Cadre, which is a partnership between the One Arizona Table. It's a coalition of about uh, 15 community organizations that do everything from youth leadership development to community organizing and electoral organizing and the Arizona Education Association. The idea is to develop this cadre of teachers and education support personnel to really support and advance the work that the organizations do. Really was excited to hear about this. I only heard about it a couple days ago, so I'm a lot of familiar faces. So, good morning. Good morning and welcome. Thank you. Thank you. of knowing a few of you and meeting you all 
Uh, and what I know is that you're not average. You're not average. I would, and I'm just so proud of you because you are all powerhouses. Uh, we've got Harvard here, we've got Young, we've got Medium, we've got uh, very skilled. I'm just so proud of you and I want you to walk out and always feel that way and walk tall. Pronounce your name correctly and uh, know that you are a powerhouse. That is who you are. And don't let anybody ever say less about you. Uh, we have some sp soft-spoken powerhouses right here. Carlos, I am amazed with you and with all of you. These pictures that you look or you see around us, be sure to walk around. I am just totally impressed. Carlos is the one that has presented that to us. And later on in the day, he, his workshop is going to be very great. I, was just, I just love what he does, everything that he does. So be sure you meet everyone in here. I think we're going to start the program with the, uh, well, what we have put here, the DACA, DACA student. Really, it's going to be the highlight of our students here, the Boise students. And they're going to be talking a little bit about what it is to be a DACA student, some of the challenges, and then also some of the proactive, uh, you know, activities that they've uh, taken on, you know, since they've, uh, I guess, basically been put behind the eight ball in, in that, in the sense of, the, again, their education getting paid for. And they do so much that I think that you'll be really impressed with the DACA students. All of us, I think, in this room understand what DACA is all about, right? And if not, it's right here, and we can talk a little bit more about that, even a little bit more of the, of the historical, let's say, uh, aspects of it. Um, deferred action for childhood arrivals. Uh, I think that most of us understand that there, were, there was also a, uh, another, let's say, action proposition or something called the, uh, a, it escapes me right now, but but it was it, it had alien in there. The alien, um, what was it called? The Dream Act, right? And we discussed this in Knox, the National Association of Chicanos, uh, Chicanos, Chicanos in Higher Education, uh, not for higher education, uh, the Chicano Conference, right? The annual conference, you know, that brings a lot of the, the people that are actually doing work, you know, for us and, and on behalf of us, uh, studying this. And what it means to us, and because of that, you know, alien act, right? They try to kind of try to soften it up, and you know, now it's that, right? And so these students are here to share some of their stories with us. So I don't know if you want to come over yeah. here so that everybody can come to you. So sad. Well, um, as you all know, I'm a DACA student. I was born in Mexico. My family emigrated to the United States because of the oppression that we suffered over there. Um, and it was uh, two years ago, I was mopping floors, cleaning restrooms. That was my life. It wasn't until that time that this door opened and my life changed. As uh, I mentioned earlier, I've, done, I've been very involved with the community, giving back. Currently, that is only for two years, so I'm trying to make the most of uh, positive change I can in the two years that I've had. Currently, I just reapplied for that guy. So we'll see how that ha what happens. I really. If it doesn't go through, I'll go back to cleaning the restrooms and mop the floors. So. No. <laughs> that's, that's, that's me. Okay, well, my experience with DACA, well, my life has been very similar to his. Um, we came from Mexico, we faced that tremendous uh, poverty, and that's why we immigrated here um, when we were at, was it 10 or 11? 11, 11 years of age. Um, I attend, I went to Washington State, then I came back. I did uh, my middle school and high school here. I graduated from North High School. I was Me too. Uh, all right. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, uh, I graduated. I took honors classes and IB classes. I was I think my uh, my weighted GPA was 3.9, unweighted uh, 4.2 or upper than a little bit. Um, so after that, I didn't know since I was undocumented, I didn't know how I was going to finance my college education. So it was I was thirsty to study. I, that's that's what I've always wanted to do, and I couldn't pursue it because I simply didn't have the money for it. So it was it wasn't until DACA came in. I took was it two years off, a little bit two years off, uh, in which we were uh, since we were fourteen actually we started cleaning cleaning um, places and uh, mopping floors, and that helped us finance it. But it wasn't really until DACA came in the, and Maricopa Community Colleges decided to uh, make 
DACA recipients um, receiving state tuition. So that really helped us, and we started going to school. Right now, we are we came up with Voices United. Um, it was a group of us and myself who decided to create this nonprofit organization. It's a 501c4, and uh, it helps not only fund our education, but also fund the education of other people who are not uh, who are going to Phoenix College and other um, educational insti institutions. So that's that's what we're doing, and we're pushing. We're pushing for uh, uh, so that our parents can also be recipients of DACA, and also for uh, us to be able to obtain a driver licenses here in Arizona. I had to go all the way to Washington State, where I have some family, to get my driver's license, just to be able to go to school or go to work without being pulled up, pulled up, and uh, my car being taken away. So that's my story. And uh, again, I, as like my brother, I had to renew my deferred action because it expired. Well, it expires this year on November 22nd, but I already renewed it and it got to me, so I have a, I have an extension for two years already. So that's that's my story. Okay, my name's Rosa. I'm actually one of the student, but I've seen the hardships my sister has gone through. Like, she's not from here, she's from Mexico, and so she didn't have her paper, so I saw all the hardships she had to go through. She had to work full-time, a full-time job, and a part-time job aside from that to pay off her tuition, which was really high. And then it wasn't only her, I saw like the hardships my friends went through. And so, like, I heard about Voices just this semester, and I was interested in it because I wanted to, you know, help make a difference for the people that needed it. And I saw that my sister really needed it a lot too. And I even told her about it. She wants to get involved as well. But I just want to help out with whatever I can. And I helped out before. I used to help out a lot in Plumas, Arizona. I was really involved because I want to, you know, I want to be. Like, I want to make a change for people that need it, you know, and that's me. <laughs> and I'm also trying to take advantage ever, like, my whole life I've seen how the struggle of my sister and my mom, and I just wanted to take advantage of my education. Yeah. And uh, my name is Enrique Orcas, once again, and uh, I must say that that when DACA came through, uh, it, I mean, it really changed my life, you know, 180. Uh, I was struggling with school. I was uh, I finished college uh, taking one class at a time because of Proposition 300, where uh, it, it exponentially increased tuition to a rate that I wasn't able to afford. And uh, just not being able to access scholarships, not being able to obtain financial aid, it really uh, imposed like a wall to my education. And um, just being able to receive deferred action, and not only to receive, but for the community colleges to uh, lower their tuition and to include us as in-state students, I mean, it really, it really helped me out a lot. And I mean, I wasn't able to uh, take advantage of it for, for, you know, uh, for a long time, because I did transfer to ASU. I was towards the end of my degree. But luckily, I was able to receive my degree, and I was able to transfer to ASU. And at this moment, uh, I am once again faced with a wall in my education uh, because at ASU and at all, all the other state universities, we're not able to obtain uh, in-state tuition as well. And that tuition right over there, it's exponentially greater than even the community colleges. But just having deferred action allows me to work, to save every single penny of, of, uh, that I earn to go to school. And uh, even then, I'm very limited to what I can, to uh, how many classes I can take. But I mean, at least I can go to school. So it's it's a positive change. Thank you for for sharing that aspect. And then we shared a couple of other aspects of what you know it is to, to be a DACA student. But more more than that, uh, I just wanted to to I guess highlight you know the, the perseverance because I think that most of us know you know uh, what it is to be in a position of one. And, 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 and also, you know, having to to study and to, to do well, and they're just a prime example, I think, of, of what it is to, to be a model student. Uh, also went to PC, he also went to Phoenix College, and now he's at ASU. Uh, 
uh, as you heard their, you know, their introductions and hear a little bit more about their lives in a second. But um, I was very impressed. Uh, uh, Amalia Villegas is one of our members as well here at Nache, and uh, she took it upon herself to, you know, get space for them so they can meet. But more than anything, I was impressed that of the self-starters that they are, and I know they're going to go far, and I know that, you know, each of us, we've given them our you know, little, I guess, uh, contributing a little uh, <coughs> brain of uh, salt or whatever. You know, it's going to make a difference. And them also, me being here, you know, and, 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 and working with the community, because more than that, they come here, they go to the forum, you know, they, they have their own meetings, and then they belong to all these organizations. To me, you know, we have to know these people, we have to make sure that we're connected. I think we're going to need them more than they need us, so, you know, that's just to keep some perspective on that. But can you also tell us about the activities that have been going on? You know, since you started Voices at Phoenix Hodge. Again, it was their initiative you know, to start Voices. This is like mother. She's just amazing. So if you see her, please thank her. And we all thank her from the bottom of our heart. She has made a tremendous difference in our life. Um, so we came up with this initiative called Voices United, which was a group of students who was really struggling and we really wanted to pursue our, our education. Unfortunately, we couldn't. We couldn't afford it. So we started to get together and plan different events. We started with a dance, and thank you to the Arizona Hispanic Community Forum and all those other people who were willing to sponsor us, who were willing to donate their time, who invited their friends and their personal connections to all of these events. We were able to fundraise for students to pay their tuition and be able to attend school for another semester. After that, we did a piano concert with an award. Well, I'll let you guys build on the other events. Uh, well, uh, after that dance uh, event that we had, we had a piano concert, which went tremendously great. Uh, we found we were able to fundraise, uh, I think, over five hundred dollars for every student that was part of Voices at that time, and uh, it was just great. Everything uh, we had for free, we people donated. The pianist decided to do the concert for us for free. Uh, we were just extremely blessed to to be able to pull something of that magnitude and uh, so I'm just I'm just extremely thankful and overwhelmed by what happened through that experience and we look forward to making even more events to fundraise for our, our education and uh, we have an upcoming event that uh, I think do you want to explain more well, it's, it's called the art of the dream and it's basically we're getting donations from different um, from different people uh, with uh, pictures or like photographs or drawings that they have made and what we're going to do is exhibit those and are we going to raffle them off? Yes. Yeah. Yes, we're going to raffle off those um, pictures and drawings and they, we're going to be serving champurrado and pan de dulce and um, what else is it? Uh, that event is going to be held on December 7th. It's a Sunday. It's going to be from 2 to 3.30 p.m. It's going to be held in Alac. Uh, downtown Phoenix, and as you mentioned, we're gonna be in the Park Gala, and we should be having some music, a DJ. Uh, we're gonna be raffling away the art, and hopefully you guys can uh, can tell your friends. And uh, we also have some uh, uh, contact information in case you'd like to leave us your contact information. We'll surely uh, contact you, mm -hmm. and if you could please help us also with the event, uh, you know, just spread the word, and that would be that would be a great. Thank you very much. What's the date? Uh, December seventh. December seventh. Yeah, it's a uh, Sunday from two to three thirty p.m. Uh, at a lock downtown. A lot of people don't know what a lock is. I know what it is, but I want to let them know. Yeah, yeah it's the Arizona. Uh, Arizona Latino Art Cultural Center. Yes. Okay. And then we had a scholarship fundraiser there two years ago. Yeah, no, uh, you don't. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's on Adam Street and right across from the Civic Center. Second uh, Street and Adam. Second Street and Adam. Right. I know the circle. And, and, and I'm sure that there's going to be a, a, a flyer that's going around right, with the information uh, from now to December, right? Yeah, if you, if you all can email that to one of us, we can put it on the website. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, hold on a little bit. Because I know that each one of us, or each one of you, talked about your education aspirations and where you're going and what you're doing. So kind of remind us a little bit now that we're kind of like facing everybody. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm currently a junior at Arizona State University. I'm studying urban planning. Uh, that's at the Geographical uh, School for Sciences. 
and um, I'm currently doing a bachelor's of science in planning, and uh, I'm gonna I'm about to go into my last phase of the bachelor's degree, uh, and my aspirations in the, for the future is to continue with a master's, hopefully get a master's in GIS and also a master's in planning, and uh, I would also like to be an intern. Hopefully next semester I can get an internship with the city of Phoenix, and uh, as I briefly mentioned as well. Uh, at ASU and at the state universities, we're really struggling with the tuition rate. Uh, the tuition rate continues to be out-of-state tuition, and that's about 25000 a year for a full-time student. So that's, that's a lot of money. And uh, so we're trying to change that, and uh, hopefully we can do that, that change in the next coming, next coming months or early years. Hopefully we can do that positive change. What happened at the Board of Regents meeting? Has it happened? Uh, yeah, I was going to mention that as well. The meeting is going to be next week. On Thursday and Friday at ASU, the 20th and 21st, uh, I was actually meeting with Herman Cardenas from uh, the Arizona, uh, no, the uh, ASU Dream Zone Allies, and um, he's a coordinator there. And we are trying to come up with uh, with us with pretty much like a presentation or multiple presentations that we can uh, go up to the board and just uh, share a number of stories of students. And it's gonna be at 8 a.m. 8, 8 to 9 a.m. Is, is when it's gonna start on the 20th. That's gonna be a Thursday at ASU. So if all of you can please attend or just share it with some of your friends. Uh, as he mentioned, the target goal is to get 100 students to be inside the room, just to have a presence and to let the board know that there's a lot of students who wanna go to school, but they just cannot afford it. And uh, as he mentioned yesterday, uh, this was something that really struck, struck out from the conversation was that there's only about 10 to 20 students who are under DACA. That's, that's, what they, that's what they say that there are in ASU. And that's, out of 60,000 students, that's just, I mean, that's almost nothing. So we're trying to increase that, and hopefully uh, we can, we can get, we can get uh, started with that uh, Board of Regents uh, meeting on Thursday. Hopefully we can, we can share it and have some of the board members vote on it uh, sometime this year, hopefully. Yes. And chance to include the dreamers because on top of you there's other people and other I mean it doesn't necessarily have to be ASU mm -hmm. but you have I mean we could all show presence and show more support but um, yeah. I think if we have the dreamers backing you guys up because that's a different entity but it still involves all of us here I think if we reach out to them and kind of support you have that additional support because now now you're only getting your perspective from ASU while in ASU, but you're getting it from other community colleges because that's what the board's gonna look at. Yeah. It's not just ASU, what other schools are being affected and how can we address the whole issue instead of just one. Mm -hmm. So if you bring different uh, community colleges, various students, it's all different type of students from different areas in the region and saying what you guys are saying and explaining it from different perspectives, but again, with the same goal in mind. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, there's uh, they're they're actually working also with uh, ADEC, the Arizona Dream Act Coalition. So they're trying to get also some students from there. But uh, I mean, just just support in general in the uh, in the form of students, in the form of you know professors or just community members, just the presence there and the support. I think that's gonna make a statement that day. So hopefully you guys can let let, uh, let everybody else know and you can join us as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, We'll talk um, on a break or something so I can get details from you guys. Definitely, so, definitely. Thank you. I'm taking notes, but. <laughs> <laughs> And as you guys know, my name is Rosa. My major is like forensics and psychology. My minors are business and child development. Right now, I'm, I already got my AAA for psychology and general arts. And I'm going for my bachelor's for psychology right now in ASU. I'm a part time student right now. And I'm going for my certificate for business and my certificate for family and child studies. And I'm also, during the summer, I'm gonna go for an internship for psychology. And then like, later on, once I'm finished with my child and fa family studies um, certificate, I'll be able to get an internship for that as well. And yeah, for me, like for the future, what I actually wanna do with once I'm able to start working, my plan is to um, start saving up while I work in forensics and psychology. Uh, start saving up so that in the future, later on, I'm able to, this is just a dream of mine since I was little, is to open up a, a business, a restaurant for my family because it's been their dream and 
I really want to contribute to that because I know they've done so much for me and I want to give back to them. Yeah. Yeah, that's me and I've actually been involved ever since I was young too. I don't know, I think it was just like the way my parents raised me. I always did volunteer work and I loved being involved like a lot with the community a lot. And I've been in like Mecha, Ale, like I'm in Pipe de Kappa with voices now, and I was helping out Promise Arizona before. Then I used to help out a lot, like just do volunteer work ever since I was young. I was in this club called HTM, which was helping those in need. So, I mean, for me, like, for me, like, another thing that I love doing is helping out with whatever I can with people that actually need it. Because um, for me, I try not to think too much of the things that happen to me because I know people go through something worse and so I want to help out the people that are going through worse. But yeah, that's me. <laughs> she's, she's being humble right now. She's amazing. She's a powerhouse. That's what I think I said earlier. She's amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so I plan on pursuing, currently I'm pursuing my business degree uh, with an emphasis in management and I plan on part of pursuing my biomedical engineering degree. Um, so I will be transferring to ASU, as I mentioned earlier, in May of 2015, where I plan on completing my business administration degree. And uh, hopefully, uh, my goal is to enter an internship with some company, a major company, where I can learn the uh, experience or gain the experience necessary to, uh, on the long term, have my own nonprofit organization. That's the sector I want to do it. And that is because my dream is to have my own company in biomedical engineering. Um, and I would like to primarily help people in third world countries uh, by helping them get uh, diagnosis and treatment for diseases that they have. Uh, and also here in this country, uh, another one of my, of my goals, and it may seem like too much, but it's just because I want to pay it forward so much, just because people have helped me, is to create schools in uh, third world countries because I know and I deeply believe that education is a pathway to living a more prosperous and better life. So that's that's what I want to do with, in a nutshell. Um, uh, those are my goals, those are my dreams, and I know that, again, as she mentioned, unity is everything, uh, and that's, that's what I want to do. Well, as I mentioned before, my name is Gilberto Sosa. Currently, I'm a student at Phoenix College where I'm majoring in business administration and minoring in political sciences. And I want to emphasize I'm in law. That's why attending Harvard is one of my major things, getting my MBA in business administration. I want to, to eventually create my own nonprofit organization and give back. Currently, I'm the voter registration coordinator with Chicanos por la Causa. So working with them, I've actually, I, I get to see that firsthand experience of how these nonprofits help the community, they make an impact. And even though the numbers reflect it, I understand that every number is a person and it's a life and making a difference in their life. It's the most rewarding feeling any, anyone could ever experience. Um, so I'm very involved with civic engagement. I'm part of the Maricopa Community College's Student Public Policy Forum. So I'm learning about civic engagement and the importance it is to vote, to be active, to, be, to express what we need, the changes that we must see in society. Very important. And that's why I'm, I'm minoring in political sciences. Now, law, I want to advocate for my community. I know that a lot of people suffer for, from misrepresentation. They're not aware of the laws. They're, and now we fall victims of those who manipulate the system in such a way that some people might feel lesser than because they're just not aware of these. And I want to be that voice. I want to, be, to make that change that must happen. And it will eventually happen. So, so they're, yeah. <laughs> they're like standard, right? That's why they have voices, right? The group voices. You know? So, uh, you know, very this, good. Right? Uh, oh, I just wanted to mention a couple of things now. Uh, that um, uh, we have to keep in mind that the voice, the uh, Dream Act, obviously, impacted a lot of people positively. But those of us who are informed, there are a lot of people that are uninformed, and that's the majority, though, that is. And we would think that, you know, the way that it's been promoted, that almost 100% or 90% or 70 or 80, not even close, mm -hmm. of those students 
are getting the opportunities that we are, and I think it's incumbent upon all of us. So obviously, we're talking to the choir, but I mean, what are we doing so that those people, the, their parents, especially, right? Uh, because it comes, the fear kind of comes from parents, I think, you know, in, the, in terms of getting to higher education, to informing ourselves. So I think that if we can make that difference, and I think you will, obviously, right? Uh, but I think they're the leaders in that for us, you know, and get the word out you know, to, to get a better life. I was just going to ask if voice is it an acronym to the spell for uh, is it an acronym for something or is it just voices united um, we need a voice yeah we need a voice that's what it is it's not an acronym okay I just wanted to I wanted to ask you said that a lot of the dream students are not involved or don't have access right now to the dream act do I understand that to to that to and now, remember, the dream has become DACA the now because they wanted us to. Right? So, if they want to get involved or get in contact with them, how would they do it? Get involved with Voices United or DACA. Uh, there is, if you go to the uh, USCIS website, they have the list of all the requirements. They're really strict when it comes to the process. It is a very lengthy process. Now, uh, luckily, um, we have a lot of friends who have who are willing to donate their time and go through that paperwork with those students because it, a lot of lawyers, when DACA first came to be, a lot of lawyers were charging up a thousand dollars just for the applicant for to review the application. It's a there's a fee of four hundred sixty five dollars associated with that. So a thousand four hundred sixty five dollars it's a really heavy burden in those people who everything most of the job they they do it comes from under the table and you know the job opportunities that they have are very manual and labor intensive, so it is very hard to afford something like that. So um, if you guys happen to know anyone who might need the assistance, please send them our way. We have the contact information of those people that are willing to make the difference, and we'll try to help them out. Please send them to Voices, yes. and that yeah. would be at Phoenix College. Phoenix College, and we can, wow, we actually, a lady that did our DACA, she did it uh, for free, she, so we can get that contact information, and she's qualified to, to review uh, legal paperwork. So. Well, I think that's part of the reason. It's the, the amount of money is prohibitive. Mm -hmm. So it does not fall on the shoulders of people that they're ignorant and stuff. I think a lot of this is they don't have the money. It is. You know, and that's the intent in the end, I think, is to make it prohibitive. But we can overcome that, is what you're saying. Yes. You talk with voices. Thank you. Yeah, and that's something we do as well. We, Romero and I, we did our own applications. We went, we read through the script of the many, many laws and regulations and whatnot. So even though we're not qualified in the legal status, but uh, we can help people guide them in that direction. The lady, uh, Lexi Diaz. I mean, it's, anyway, it's, yeah. say it the way it is, you are experts. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Okay, um, I think we have about maybe a little five minute break before the next panel. Restrooms are directly across from us, um, and I'm going to get some water bottles. I need to go. Okay. We get some water. Yeah. 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 Yeah.